Hello and a big welcome to today's class of Maori's Biology. Today we will discuss about a very important topic called as respiration in animals. You know pretty well that respiration is one of the wonderful metabolic activities which yields energy in our body. By means of oxidation, the food yields energy inside the mitochondria of a cell. But that's totally a different story that is carried out as cellular respiration. But today we are going to discuss about the types of respiration in different animals. See, life is diverse. Actually to say, diversity is the basic feature of life. Okay, now let us focus on the topic of respiration in different animals. Starting from the protozoans to the highest evolved animals, that is mammals, that is human beings, we have our different types of respiratory systems that have been developed in all the organisms in the course of evolution. Now today, we, we shall outline the types of respiration or respiratory systems. Now, let us come to the point of the first type that is diffusion process. In the single celled or animals or organisms such as the amoebae or the paramecium or euglena. So the protozoans broadly to say which are single celled organisms, the process is diffusion through the body surface. So here the respiratory organ is the body surface. You know pretty well that single celled organisms are bounded by a membrane, a plasma membrane in animals, that is animal cell. Now this animal cell membrane is permeable, means selectively permeable, it allows oxygen to enter into the body whenever there is deficit of oxygen inside the body and the excess of carbon dioxide which has to be expelled out will be sent out through the semi-permeable membrane the plasma membrane that surrounds the cell now diffusion is carried out in the amoeba here amoeba carries out respiration through the body surface so here it is a very simple process. It doesn't need much, uh, I, mean, uh, you, I mean, systems or much units to work for the process of respiration. Now let us come to the second point. In the organisms such as the earthworms, these earthworms and the leeches we call hirudinaria enzymes. These have got a longitudinal shape. The body of these organisms is always kept moist. This moisture over the skin helps in the process of intake of oxygen and expulsion of carbon dioxide. That is the inhalation and exhalation. In one word to say, the respiratory gaseous exchange takes place through the, I mean, the skin. And hence, we call it as cutaneous respiration. Cutin is the substance that forms the skin in these animals. These are multicellular. The body is longitudinal. It consists of several segments. It is elastic. These animals such as the earthworms live in moist areas. To retain the moisture, they have adopted three major methods. One is they live in the moist areas that is marshy sites. Second, the body consists of small pores on the dorsal surface. We call them as dorsal pores. Through these dorsal pores, the coelomic fluid will be constantly coming out. It will be oozing out, keeping the skin always moist. So this moisture over the skin facilitates the respiratory gases exchange. And thirdly, the animals have adopted a wonderful system of having a layer of mucin or mucus over the skin. So this helps the animal to respire. So these three processes, being in marshy areas, having dorsal pores, and the secretion of mucous membrane, that is mucus all over the body, facilitates the animal, that is earthworm, to respire. Here the respiratory organ is skin. And thirdly, we shall talk about the tracheal respiration. Tracheal respiration is a process in which most of the insects respire. 
trachea means very small and microscopic tubules. Small microscopic tubules are present all over the body inside the insect. The insect's body, as you know, is covered by or it is enveloped by a chitinous exoskeleton. Here these, these two plates, the sternum and the tegmum, that is the dorsal plate and the ventral plate are held by means of alary muscles. The fan-shaped alary muscles will be constantly helping in the contraction and relaxation of the body. Due to the contraction and relaxation of the body, the air will be locked in and it will be sent out during the contraction. During the relaxation process, as the volume of the body increases inside, the air is, I mean, dragged in and when the body contracts, due to the contraction of alary muscles which are present on the laterals, when they contract, the body will be subjected to contraction like this. Hence, the volume decreases and the carbon dioxide is expelled out. Here, we have got a beautiful system of microtubules called as trachea. And hence, we call it as tracheal system. Here, we, we, can, we can say the spiracles are present. The spiracles. These are present at the laterals. These small pores are called as spiracles or stigmata. Through this, the air enters into the body. And there are small chambers. These are called as atria. So second is atria. A-T-R-I-A. -A. Atria. These are small chambers in which the oxygen is temporarily stored. From here, when the body contracts, the air enters into the longitudinal tracheal trunk. The longitudinal tracheal trunk runs from the anterior end to the posterior end. That is from the head region to the tail region. From there, it again dissipates into the body through these small microtubules called as tracheae. So, third is longitudinal tracheal trunk and the fourth is the trachea or tracheoles. These four constitute the tracheal system in an insect. Example, cockroach. So here, the air that has entered into the body will diffuse into the tissues. It helps in the process of absorption of oxygen and then expulsion of carbon dioxide. In the same way, right from the tracheoles, the carbon dioxide is sent into the longitudinal tracheal trunk and from there into the atria and through the stigmata during the contraction phase of the body, the carbon dioxide is sent out forcibly. So this is how respiration takes place in a cockroach or any insect including a locust or maybe grasshopper or a dragonfly or a housefly or any other insect. So the which bear the tracheal system. Now let us talk about the vertebrates. Vertebrates here, bran the branchial system and the pulmonary system are the two specified highly developed systems of respiration in vertebrates. All others we call carnets which have a prominent vertebral column. Then in fish, we find the gills on bilaterally means on both the sides up towards the anterior end of the body, that is towards the sides of the body in the head region. They are covered by means of operculum in bony fishes. So fishes are of two kinds. Basically, they are categorized into two kinds. The fishes which wear bone inside their body, they are called as bony fishes or teleost fishes. And the other is elasmobranch or cartilaginous fish. Example, shark. Bony fish, an example is labia rohita or labia rohu or katla katla, the general fish that people eat. Now here, the fish bears gills. While it is swimming inside the water, it opens out the mouth. When it opens the mouth, the floor of the oral cavity is dragged down. As a result, water enters into the mouth. The water consists of dissolved oxygen. And inside the mouth, we find the internal branchial apertures. So, water enters into the mouth first. 
then the fish closes its mouth firmly so that the water is locked inside it is packed inside from there it enters into the internal branchial apertures into the gill pouches so internal branchial apertures means small pores which are located inside the mouth on both the sides into the gill pouches these internal branchial apertures open allowing the water to enter into the gill pouches where a semi lunar or crescent shaped gills are embedded on both the sides that is bilaterally these gills bear gill lamellae which resemble to that of the comb so here when the water is forced towards the outside when the mouth is closed firmly the water rushes out and during the rushing out of water through these gill lamellae in the gill pouches the oxygen is absorbed because these gills are richly supplied with the blood the blood which consists of hemoglobin it absorbs the oxygen and then it sends the oxygen into the blood the blood carries the oxygen now these gill lamellae absorb the oxygen and then expel out the carbon dioxide thus the respiratory gases exchange occurs in the gill pouches so gill chambers or gill pouches where the gills are present then from the gill pouches where the gills are present the water moves out of the body when the operculum opens up through the external branchial apertures the external branchial apertures in the bony fishes as i said teleost fishes is covered by a sheath i mean a very hard sheath called as the operculum whereas in t in elasmobranchs that is in cartilaginous fish such as sharks we find skin folds which are, which are will be constantly opening and closing allowing the air to come out from the inside of the body after the respiratory gas is exchanged this water will be having carbon dioxide which is sent out thus in fish the respiration takes place in the gills so the respiratory organs in fish are the gills and finally when we talk about human beings which are highly evolved animals on this planet called as earth the beautiful planet the most beautiful planet that we but that we know which supports lot of life the human beings in human beings that is we we have got a pair of lungs situated in the thorax starting from the nose through the external nostrils the air enters into the nose from there the air is taken inside into the respiratory system from there it enters into the that is nose from nose is connected towards the inside and here begins the trachea into the trachea the air enters trachea is a cartilaginous tubule which is supported by c shaped cartilaginous rings from being collapsing which prevent the trachea from collapsing the cartilaginous rings this trachea bifurcates once it enters into the chest region or the thorax into two these are called as bronchi so trachea bifurcates into bronchi singular is bronchus plural is bronchi these bronchi enter into the sacs which are called as lungs which are highly muscular which are richly supplied with blood vessels blood regularly flows into the lungs for absorption of oxygen and expulsion of carbon dioxide the lungs once the bronchi i mean bronchi enter into the lungs it again is branched profusely to form bronchioles the microtubules through which the air enters into the lungs lungs have got very small minute minor structures which are the units of respiration called as the alveoli these are the units of respiration these are the units of respiration these alveoli are the places or the sites for respiratory gases exchange during during the process of respiration in human beings now the lungs are covered by means of pleura a double layered membrane 
and between these pleural membranes there is a, a fluid called as pleural fluid which supports the lungs which prevents the lungs from getting damaged due to blows and external shocks so the lungs have got the alveoli which facilitate the respiratory gases exchange these alveoli are richly supplied with blood vessels there the oxygen is absorbed into the blood and carbon dioxide is sent out it is released into the lung cavity the lungs will be constantly contracting and relaxing contracting and relaxing during the contraction phase the carbon dioxide is forced to to be let out during exhalation and once the lungs expand that, that is lungs relax what we say the volume of the lungs is increased allowing lot of air to enter in actually the hemoglobin present in the blood absorbs only oxygen and carbon dioxide it bonds with the oxygen to form oxyhemoglobin and we shall deal with all the details in the next video which deals with the every details every detail of human respiration at the cellular level so that's for today and thank you for watching i hope you have enjoyed my lesson and i will meet you again with a wonderful session on the topic and then enjoy bye bye